Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. In our video today, we'll be undertaking the topic of vacuum type sewage treatment system. So let us start. On board a ship, as we all know that handling sewage is an intricate task. It is so because most of the countries and even at open seas, there are MARPOL as well as local regulations that prohibit the direct and excessive dumping of sewage or grey water directly into the locality. Which means that all the sources, for example, the use of urinals, the use of commodes on board, the generation of grey water or dirty water, for example, let's say from pantry, from toilets, from showers and other similar places needs to be controlled and directed and treated before it is disposed overboard. This is where a sewage treatment system comes in. So now, for example, whatever quantity of sewage or for whatever time the sewage is generated on board, I need a system to be functional which can handle the flow of the sewage, treat it and by treating what I mean is that separate the solid sludge from the water and the other debris and then further disinfect this and then allow it to go overboard in a controlled fashion. This is where the sewage treatment plant comes in. Amongst the sewage treatment plant or the sewage treatment system, there are different designs and a number of modern vessels you will find that in order to restrict the generation of the quantity of the grey water on board, that is in case let's say if your vessel is in restricted areas, what you would want to have is that the overall generation of the wastewater or grey water is less. So most systems nowadays use a vacuum design or a vacuum type circulation method. Now, how do we integrate this vacuum circulation method or a vacuum design into the common sewage treatment system or the sewage treatment plant? The sewage treatment system as a whole comprises of three basic elements. The aeration chamber, the settling chamber and the disinfection chamber. Any sludge and by sludge over here, what I mean is the human waste or the grey water or the other debris that is collected from these disposal lines. This has nothing to do with any other waste that is being generated on board through any other sections of marpole. Only the human waste or grey water or similar chronology that we are referring to. So, any wastewater or waste human sludge that would come, would come in directly into the aeration chamber's first line. So, from here, what would happen is that it would be allowed to settle and separate for a certain period of time. What happens is that there is a mesh at the inlet. So, from the solid debris, the wastewater would get separated and with the help of continuous aeration, it would be allowed to decompose in a biological manner. Once this chamber fills in, the waste and the effluent will go into the next section and then also get finally separated over there. From here, it would go into the settling chamber. In the settling chamber, the waste is allowed to settle. That means the extremely immovable waste, whatever is there, the unpumpable debris or the sludge would be allowed to settle at the complete bottom and the other parts would then overflow and go into the disinfection chamber. In the disinfection chamber, all the sewage water and all the human and the solid sludge and the debris that is being flown across would then further be disinfected and then through in a controlled manner with a discharge pump they would be pumped overboard. So how does this entire process take place? Let us understand. Except for the aeration chamber, settling chamber and the disinfection chamber, the other parts of a sewage treatment system are the chemical dosing tank, the blower, other pipings or mountings such as the inlet and the sludge return line, the overflow line, the vacuum pump, ejector pump and the anti-foaming dosing inlet or the dosing tank. In addition to this, there are also as already explained before, small aeration nozzles at the bottom of the aeration chamber, the common walls and the line that connect the overboard side, the discharge pump and the overboard wall. The idea behind this entire mechanism is as follows. Now let us assume there is a certain quantity of water or waste already in my aeration chamber number one. What the ejector pump would do is that once it cuts in, it would circulate this and put it back into the aeration chamber again. From here, as we can see that the vacuum ejector as a virtue of the Venturi effect would create vacuum in any line which is associated at the vacuum inlet side and this is where all the flow line of all the toilets and the urinals and the vestibules are collected at one common inlet line 
So what it would mean is that pressure sensors at the vacuum side of the toilet disposal lines as soon as they sense that there is a drop in the vacuum they would trigger the ejector pump which would then circulate the wastewater and then try to maintain the vacuum within these lines through the vacuum inlet. What it also means is that once the vacuum is maintained as a virtue of vacuum and gravity both the waste would come either through the vacuum inlet line or for other side that is the grey water side it will come as a virtue of gravity. So all this waste then from vacuum inlet side and as well as the gravity inlet side would go into the aeration chamber number one and from there as already reiterated before it would continue the same treatment and disposal method. The blower here is helpful in two ways. First of all the design that we are seeing over here is a biological type design. So what it means is that in the human waste there are two methods of disposing. One is through aerobic process and the anaerobic process. The aerobic process requires my bacteria to have sufficient quantity of oxygen available to regenerate and then be able to decompose the waste that is collected inside the aeration and the settling chamber. Otherwise what would happen is the waste would directly come in and keep settling. There would be no decomposition after a time it would start stinking or let's say getting collected simply and then that would lead to clogging of pipes and finally choking of the STP. So to avoid that my blowers continuously supply the air necessary within the aeration chamber and then this air goes out through the aeration nozzles and churns the sewage that is collected over here as well as also keeps the bacteria healthy through supply of oxygen. Also what is important over here is the line that we can see over here is for the ventilation or the emergency overflow. So what it necessarily means is that let's say tomorrow this line on the discharge side gets choked or in case there are any gaseous generations within the sewage treatment system as we all know that during the decomposition methane as well as other gases are generated. So there can be a situation where the sewage treatment plant can become a very big hazard of explosion if these gases are not handled properly. So that is where the ventilation or the overflow line comes into place as these gases are continuously allowed to escape and ventilated directly onto the outlet side of the open deck through the vents of the sewage treatment system and same with the help of save all trays are also secured so that in case if there is a very minor or any significant overflow it can be contained. Most modern vessels have a metered disinfection dosing tank and a pump that means with the help of a select numeric input manually you can control depending upon the frequency and the number of people that uh, use the sewage treatment system you can control the rate of dosing of this disinfection chemical so that overdosing does not happen otherwise in some cases you will observe that at certain ports where the port state control are very sensitive because of the local regulations there might be a chance that once a sample is drawn on the outlet side of the disinfection chamber the content of chlorine or other chemical can be high as per their standards which is unacceptable and can lead to penalties and reprimanding of the vessel as well and hence it is very important for us to understand the disinfection rate should be properly metered. Similarly the discharge pump would pick up the waste from any of the outlets. So let's say when I am out at open sea any of these outlets can be used for reverse back flushing of the chamber as well. For example, let's say if I am to have over here a free flange and with these walls being not of the non-return type but of the simple bi-direction type. What would happen is if I connect a fresh water hose over here in this flange and then try to back flush this chamber, the flow would reverse and that would mean that any sludge or any sewage that is settled down at the bottom of the aeration settling or disinfection chamber can be back flushed without actually opening the containment tanks. So this would also help in keeping the discharge pump or the discharge line clean. Then the discharge pump under normal circulation method would pick up the finally treated and disinfected wastewater and the content from the disinfection chamber and then take it overboard through the overboard line. I hope that this clear understanding of the vacuum type sewage treatment system helps you in understanding later on when you encounter these systems on board. Please do make sure to share our videos with your colleagues and subscribe to our channel and help us grow together. Thank you.